health issues. We know those are the answers. I don't know why government can't hear those solutions. And again, we need to continue to remind them. I just want to thank each of you for coming out here today, again, bringing the attention to the government here and to the Canadians and to the fellow Ontarians here in Ottawa to recognize that this omnibus bill is not going to do anything to protect us here in Canada. It's only going to jail our most vulnerable people, a lot of Aboriginal people, our First Nations people of this country. Again, we've had enough. We've had enough of this jail business. We want the government to do us right. We want this omnibus bill to not go forward. We want to make sure this omnibus bill is not the way forward for the government to create the housing, an expensive housing, which is called jail. No, that's not the answer. We need to stand together and not what I heard today is Canadians for unity. That's what we want. So our next speaker is uh, named Shala Khan Satter, and she is the chair of Muslims for Progressive Values in Canada. Thank you very much. I greet you all with our Muslim greeting. Salamu alaikum. Thank you. We at Muslims for Progressive Value Canada, we believe in freedom of conscience, freedom of expression. We believe that an Islamic society can only be secular and it must uphold true democratic freedoms. We believe Allah loves us all regardless of gender, race, faith, citizenship, class, and sexual orientation. And we support the 99%. The Prime Minister leading the country, telling us all that our greatest threat is Islamist terrorism, notwithstanding that only 1% of the world's terrorist acts are committed by people who call themselves Muslim, we must ask, will the 697,000 innocent Canadians who call themselves Muslim become targets as criminals under this law? And will innocent Canadians of other faiths who s associate with their peace-loving Muslim Canadian neighbors and friends also be targeted? And will this law be used to help vilify everything Muslim in Canada? And with the Shafia trial going on, it's hard to pick up a paper and not read Mr. Shafia's villainous rants about his beautiful daughters and not to associate them with Islam and Muslims. But the rest of us must not lose sight that not all Muslim men are Muhammad Shafia. Most Muslim men in Canada are like my father, Asadullah Khan, who raised three daughters in Canada, none of whom observed the rules of modesty, all of whom dated boys, and all of whom married for love with his blessing. No matter how upset he got, he rarely raised his voice. He never ever used force against his children or his wife. And to us, that is Islam. So in the... In the interest of ensuring we do not become what we hate here in Canada, I would ask everyone to oppose this bill. Salamu alaikum. Our next speaker is um, our, our, our final official speaker of the day, and last but certainly not least, we're very proud um, to have Kim Pate, the Executive Director of the Canadian Association of Elizabeth Fry Societies, to join us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura, for the incredible work you've done organizing and all of your colleagues. Um, it's and it's been incredible to hear from so many different people uh, from so many different perspectives. This bill. What's happening in this country impacts every single one of us. But most importantly, it will represent huge change. It will change, as many of you have said, Canada from what we know, the country we love, the country that valued, that promoted, that stood for human rights internationally for many, many, many years. We should be ashamed of what we stand for now. When we have Texas, when we have California that have gone down this path and are turning back and saying, don't do what we're doing. 
trying to teach us something and we're not listening, there's a huge, huge problem. But I have huge... All of you know that Canada is rich enough that we could have a national child care program. We could have open, honest, accessible health care, including mental health services, support services, treatment services for everybody. We are rich enough that we could have free, not just public education, which has been cut, but also post-secondary education for all Canadians. It's no accident that countries that have the highest literacy rates, the lowest poverty rates, also are the most peaceful countries. Many of those are disappearing as well. And they're looking at, others are looking at Canada and the leadership or lack thereof and following in ways that we don't want them to follow. We have a moment now where we have seen provinces, territories, individuals, groups start to rise up. And we need to really encourage that rising up. I think the Occupy movement shows us some incredible ways of sharing values of love, <laughs> caring, <laughs> kindness, equality, peace. and unity and peace and solidarity, all of the things that we should learn from, that we should regain, that we should reunite and demand for this country because we all deserve it and our generations to come deserve it. When my, my daughter, who's 12, nearly 13, first heard about this bill, she thought I was saying the ominous bill. <laughs> She was right, it is an ominous bill. And all of her friends call it the ominous bill. But what was actually terrifying to me this morning is I told her she, didn't, she could come if she wanted to come today. She was terrified that everybody might get arrested. Shame. She asked me. Shame. 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 She asked me to make sure nobody got arrested. I did not achieve that today, and I'll have to tell her that when I go home. Shame! 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 We want all people to know that they are part of Canada, and they belong in Canada, and they deserve to have all of their needs met, and they deserve to be the best they can be. United will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. Thank you. Street. Yeah. 